How you doing, everyone? Uh, glad you could make it back <laughs> or make it for the first time. I, California guys, um, it would be a pretty early day, those on the West Coast. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Dominic? Um, hi, Derek. Let me, uh, well, <laughs> hi, Mike. Phoenix, oh, my God. How you guys doing in Phoenix? Cooled off there yet? I think we got some of your heat out there. It was over 80 today. <laughs> oh, good. Thanks, Brian. You know, I, I tell you, I got this uh, new microphone, and my old one with all of this stuff and the keyboard and everything, I don't know. <laughs> this one's easier. Hi, Graham. John, how are you? Still hot in Texas, yeah. You guys out there have been frying. We've been, well, we've been pretty hot, too, for here. I think it's it's been in the 90s, and I think they've had uh, some... Uh, or uh, what humidity level or whatever they call it, that the the real amount was over a hundred the way it felt. Brooklyn to 92. Yikes. 30 days of 110 plus. My God. I used to live in Tucson years ago. And um it was it got hot there in the summer also. I lived in El Paso. Um El Paso, though, I think most people don't realize that that thing is is over a mile high. It's like Denver. It's way up there. It's up in the Franklin Mountains. Still high desert, hot, hot and dry. Heat index. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Hey, Run Cowsey, how you doing? Okay. Uh, let me get started. Uh, this morning, um, we were talking about some ideas that we could that we could use. And again, these ideas are not limited. I mean, it can be any other kind of ideas to to somehow work with existing entities. Now. The one, the the company I think that has the most to offer is Aganor, and we've worked with them. And it's, I mean, it, in terms of a watchmaker, this doesn't mean other companies can't or wouldn't be interested in it. It simply means, given everything, given our experience, Aganor is the one to work with now. Is given the success and the numbers and so on and so forth of people who wanted to be involved with this. Um, it's it's something that I had mentioned this morning. It's open to everybody, really. I mean, and when I say open, I don't mean Larique is open to everybody, but it just fills up too quick. Uh, the number of 100 is about all we can deal with. I mean, limited editions in our case, and I think also to some extent in Aganor's case, is that we're dealing with a lot of handmade things and things are done in a way that the quality is, is really very, very, very good quality. Um, the watches that we, that we were able to get and the movement in them from the first uh, outing has been everything you'd expect from the caliber of, of craftsmanship and everything else. Okay. Now, in, in, a, in a broader sense, what I think that I think is important is for, rather than having this little group and little, I don't know what the core is, maybe 30, 40 of us or something like that. I'm, I'm not sure. And I think is, I certainly wouldn't include other people who have been, uh, who come along later. Um, 
but I also think it's it's a good opportunity as as a general principle for the let's say the consumer us to rather than sit around and wait and say okay this is what this is what we have for watches and basically it comes down to take it or leave it and if the consumer leaves it then they it's not good for the watch companies uh if they take it uh that is good uh they have market research they do all kinds of things to try to get the right kind of combination on the other hand if a group of watch collectors go to a watch company and say look uh this is what we'd like we have this number of people uh, who are going to going to buy this, given that that you know that, that it's given to us at a an affordable amount for the kinds of things you do. So you got to remember is that a watchmaker uh, is going to basically sell the movement or the movement makers they sell it to a watch company. Uh, such as Van Cleef and Arpels or Fabergé or um, H. Moser or whomever. Uh, and other ones like Vosher, they do the same thing, except they're what we'll call off the shelf. They're already done. And so in order to talk about something like, oh, let's, let's try something that we'd like to see, what, what do we need to do is to say is to find out how not to dictate but but either to learn how or show how this is just as profitable as selling it to any other watch company uh because it is and so let me start with this again okay i had we talked about this this morning this thing believe it or not is a hairspring that uh, Vincent Calabrese invented, and he had a number of reasons why he thought this was a much better idea than a hairspring. And he he used it, he put one of these on a Salida for a test of concept, and it worked. Okay, now the fact that he put it on, on, a, on a Salida is good to know, because that means it's for any watch. Now, there may have to be a number of adjustments. For example, uh, on a Salida, typically they're 4 hertz. Uh, this would ha have to be adjusted, and I have no idea how, but it would have to be to work with, let's, let's say they wanted to put it on a 6801, which is 3 hertz. Okay. Now, I know that uh, Vincent Calabrese has been trying to find some watch company that would say, hey, okay, we'll go along with it and we'll put this in. I don't know that he's been successful or not, nor do I know whether he has gathered the funds to do it himself. All right. Uh, now, you remember that George Daniels had a very difficult time getting anybody to even try the, um, uh, the coaxial uh, escapement that he made. Everybody wanted to use the old Swiss escapement. Uh, and he worked at it for years with no success. And finally, Omega said, hey, you know, we'll do it. And they they have. I mean, that's sort of their their standard um, escapement now is the coaxial escapement. Now, Vincent Calabrese is in the same situation that um, George Daniels was in in the sense that he has something that he'd be very interested in selling. But most watch companies, like, well, let's take, let's take our watch making companies. Let's say Aganor, for example. They have, to me, the best uh, hairspring in the world, and that's the Strauss, uh, Strassmann hairspring by Precision Engineering that's owned by uh, the H. Moser and Company. Okay, so it, if we look at this as something that maybe, maybe not, maybe if uh, if we went to uh, Aganor with that, 
uh, they might say, you know, that's that would be so expensive or so out this or that that we couldn't do it. Or they may say, well, of course, we have to get together with Vincent Calabrese and Vincent Calabrese and um, the guys at Agenor uh, would have to get together and and see about the feasibility. But it's the, the thing of it is, is that here you have somebody, uh, Vincent Calabrese, who would like to see this on a watch. Now, I mean, what ideally I'm sure he would like to see some brand like uh, Omega or Rolex or one of the, or Tag Heuer or someone like that, uh, Brightly, who sell, you know, thousands and thousands of watches, adopt his, um, it's called a Gal, uh, Calsys, C A L S Y S, I believe is the right term for it. Anyway, so. What, what I think is that, that if we begin to look at things in terms of how, the, how their organizations are structured, in other words, uh, within the context of watchmaking, and how we could fit into that so that they would not only profit from it, but they would profit from a source that they'd never profited from before. That is sort of that was how my thinking went. In fact, that's what we did with Larique because here we are, we got a hundred watch collectors and probably a lot more than that, who is who's a market that nobody's touched. It's a market that wants a really high quality watch. They appreciate the horology, and yet they can't afford, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars for the kinds of watches that are made with those elements. Um, so we did it with uh, Aganor, and we can do it with, with other companies or, uh, or more with Aganor, which is, happens to be my favorite, but I just wanted to point out that um, there's, you know, this, this is the concept would be the same as simply broader. Okay, so that's what I wanted to talk about. Let me see what you guys have to say. Hi, Boston. Uh, Pinecone, Velvia, 15 degrees here. <laughs> that microphone was a fashion watch. Everyone had one, had to go. <laughs> You're right. Uh, I got myself on the wait list for Rolex Daytona. There you go. <laughs> Um, AP and Risk Check uh, did a great design contest to input from watch collectors. Great idea and cool designs came out of it. That's great. I'm glad to hear it. Um, did the did the price reflect just the the production of the of the elements, or did it include everything else that usually goes into their pricing? Hey, Robert Jr. Pinecone, now listen, listen carefully, okay? Because I'm going to tell you this just once. This morning we had to remove somebody. We're not talking about Rolex, okay? It's got nothing to do with Rolex. I don't care if Rolexes go, their price goes through the roof or through the floor. OK, it's got nothing to do with our discussion. So either drop it or get dropped. That's all I want to say. OK, we're going to talk. This is the grown ups table, not the children's table. We're going to talk about something other than Rolex. OK. All right. Good. Hey, Mark. OK, uh, run, Cowsey. Let's let's same with you. Just just we're, we're trying to focus on something else here. Not not that's not the not the children's table. OK, guys. If you want that, there's God, there's all these other people who will be glad to talk to you about it. Just not here or at least not today. Hey, football fan. I received a, a package from the Ukraine this week. Uh, I unpacked the Parmesan. Oh, wow. Great. You got a Parmigiani Hepto. That's that's an um uh, that that was Michelle Parmigiani's first movement. 
Okay, so let's get back on topic. Um, so what, what do we do to approach a watchmaker with the thing, I say, look, this is what we want, we, or we want some kind of change, so that we can, so that we can, that we can have something that we like. I mentioned uh, this this morning. This had uh, two jumping hours, uh, dual jumping hours plus a retrograde minutes, and my suggestion was well here you have all of the tooling everything that you need and this this part's important the tooling i mean but the one thing that we wouldn't want would be the uh, uh we'd want a hand wound version you wouldn't need the mini rotor and so uh this would be something that we could okay uh hang on a second Goodbye. Adios. Oh, damn thing out of here. Um, oops. Okie doke. There we go. Adios means goodbye. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's let's talk about some ideas of how you'd go about it. If you look at the structure of a watch company, you're going to find <laughs> you're going to find a a group that's responsible for marketing, for advertising, and other kinds of a distribution kind of elements. And so one thing we could offer is that would be one thing they wouldn't have to have to bother with. Uh, if they have a planned watch uh, stream coming out, they wouldn't have to bother with that. Uh, the what what they would be doing would be um, they would be saving their own resources because we wouldn't be using all of them. Plus they would be getting a new audience. They would have, uh, and, and again, like for something like this, uh, it would mean that you could use the same same resources that you already have and the only change in the, in the case of the um of this of this one i the french name is rdc at word d'ailleurs <laughs> so but would be removing this but the same tooling and everything else would be used with the rest wanting a larger uh, balance wheel that would be nice and that might be a little more i mean that would be adding more to it but the the source is the same. It would be the Strawman wheel, balance wheel. Uh, so it, it, it's sort of like looking at those kinds of things. Now, the same thing is true with this, is that say, you know, look, we want to use the, the same movement or some other movement that, that you already have going. Uh, you, and this is a simple watch in that respect. Is that you have the uh, the gear train, and you you have it set up so that you can you can see it, I mean, you can see how everything is working, as an interesting thing. Now this is not something perhaps that is the way it's normally done, but what you're doing you'd be replacing plates with finger bridges. And is, is that's the kind of thinking. And then at the same time, thinking, okay, how would this affect that company's resources? And this is our, would it, if or if I were from the company point of view, is that here we we have these guys, they're, they, 
they simply don't want to pay all of the money that we're not getting paid in the first place. In other words, they just want they just want the movement. They're going to take care of the other things themselves. They'll go get cases and and dials and so forth. But the, at the heart of it is 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 the movement that they want to deal with. That they want to um, that they want to. that they want as part of their watch that's not available now, that they would like. Okay, let's see what you guys have. Um, Dominic, you're right. <laughs> hey, Saad. Oh, you got <laughs> I'll read by Clyde, huh? Hi, Javi. William. Does the use of different watchmakers for the same watch make it very difficult and costly to service? Every, I don't know, really. I, I have no idea. In fact, if what we have right now, what we got from Aganor when, when we had this made, uh, we had asked for quite a long time and we finally got it. Not only did we get it, we got it in spades. We have a, a basically it's a, lubric a lubrication map, but the lubrication map is more than that. It is basically a breakdown of the entire movement. Uh, if you go to, if you can get them, if you go online and you look for different ETAs, for example, let's say you wanted to, uh, look at the 6498 and um and you and you put in dot pdf just to sort of do a search for that they will have the entire lubrication map of for the um for that uh, for the 6498 and plus all of their other movements which is really nice Lurik, uh not Lurik, but Aganor gave us one they made us one for the same thing which then you could give to a um, to a watchmaker and say, "Here you go." I don't think, as far as my understanding is, is that uh, Larik would be would balk at saying, "Hey, you know, uh, could we get some extra uh, parts and so forth?" On the other hand, some companies uh, are very they're very stringent about not letting anybody have their parts, and you have to go to a service center, um, such as, for example, I had my watch service with F.P. Jorn not long ago, and I don't think you could, you know, they're the only ones with the parts. Um, football fan, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Um, See, the thing of it is, is that Aganor's policy, which, I, which is a great one, really, but <laughs> you have to understand their policies, too. If you have Aganor make a movement for you, nobody else can have it. For example, the 6801 belongs to Larique. And so if somebody comes out and said, hey, I heard, heard these guys have a movement, they'd have to go through Larique to get it. Um that's not our policy. That is Aganor's policy. So what would happen with the movement used with Van Cleef and Arpels, they would have to make a change. Now, the change we're asking for is a hand-wound version without the um, platinum uh, micro-rotor uh, and asking for a larger balance wheel. Uh, this would be certainly be a different uh, movement. It wouldn't be the same one, but it uh, it have a lot of similarities. You know, a lot of times I, I've seen these comments by people who says, "Oh, that thing that thing is like a uh, an ETA common one." I don't know what uh, twenty nine eighteen. I I don't know the all of the numbers, but they would say, "Oh, that's just like the well, the thing of it is is what they're talking about." Just about all watches mechanical watches are very similar 
in that they have a barrel, they have a wheel train, uh, they have an escapement, they use the Swiss escapement. And if they, and they see that and they say, well, they think they know that's in all of them, but it's not. There are all kinds of different things going on. So it, with something as unique as this, I mean, this is, this is like really unique. Um, but by changing, by taking this out and expanding this a little, or not even expanding it, by just taking this out, you go from an automatic to a hand wound. And so you end up with really, you know, a different walk, I mean, a different movement. Now, the same thing um, is true with with the bass. We have an Agenhor bass to our movement, uh, but it's not like, I mean, it's not the same as what the bass was. It's different. And again, like I said, that's that's Agenhor's policies. On the other hand, Vosher, you can go to Vosher and, and get, all kinds of movements that exist in other watches. And that's fine too. It, the, the point isn't looking for making sure that nobody else has it, but rather trying to work out a way that is profitable and reasonable for the, for the watchmaker. Okay. That's what the point is. It's it's a it's it's not a matter of being exclusive. It's a matter of, of getting something that you want. If if Aganor tomorrow said, you know, we found this watch is really popular, um, Acme watches. Uh, wants one just like it. They want the same dial. They want the same this, the same that. I wouldn't have a problem with it. <laughs> That's me, though, because I'm not looking for ex exclusivity. What I'm looking for is a watch I really like and enjoy wearing and enjoy having and understanding the movement. But the a lot of other people who, are, who belong to Larit wouldn't agree with that at all, and so I don't think they would allow it. Um, and that's okay too. I mean, I, you know, it's sort of a matter. Well, I got mine. So, you know, who cares what, you know, all of these other people are doing anyway. Uh, okay. Hi Hans. How you doing? Uh, hi hater. Mark, uh, you love the integrity of Agonor. Oh yeah, that's that's why they're great to work with. Um, you know, it it's like I that's that's why I think if you know if a bunch of other guys came along just like us and went to Agonor and said, Hey, uh we want one like like you guys did for um Larique, what they would have to say, well we can we can't use that movement we'd have to make a different movement for you and they would but you know and so it's different we wouldn't have anything to beef about at least i wouldn't have anything if they use 6801 one of the things that happened on our, our new one is that um one of the things that um that we found out on working on our new watch, uh, we were using the 6801. Okay, and this is this was a Larique project. The irony is what happened was that they made enough changes. Um, there were a few new things I think that were really enhanced the movement and changed it enough that we're, it's now a 6802 rather than this AGH 6801. So there's not a lot of change. And I think that, uh, but I'm glad they did it because if there's something in there that a watchmaker would have to know, they have it. Okay. Uh, Hans. Um, yeah, I broke out of jail. <laughs> um, hi, Kotov. How you doing? I have watch designs appearing to me in my dreams. Okay. 
Okay. Um, so what are some other, I mean, some, what are some other things that as collectors, as a collection of collectors that, that we can see that we can look at something and say, Hey, this is an aspect we want, or this is some other feature that would be good for you. Um, the hammermatic from uh, uh, Moritz Grossmann is one that if we would say, okay, now we would like that movement and what the advantage would be is that we're going to put it in a design and everything else of our own, use our own um, cases and everything else. Wouldn't look a thing like yours. Wouldn't be called a... Uh, uh, Maurice, uh, Maurice Grossman, and we give you credit for it. So it's a, it's, it's a, um, it's a, it's a kind of, it's, it's a kind of a, it would be a kind of offer saying, look, you're going to be paying for so much anyway. And you have the tooling, you have everything else, and here's a way to make some extra money. And that would be a difficult sell, I think, because what they may be, um, what we may be going into would be a, a concern that our watch would be in competition. That's the only thing. But there would be some advantage, and I think those are the kinds of things that we have to look for. Any ideas on that? Quick strange set. Yeah, we could do that. Hi. Nigel, how you doing? Uh, what looks like nuts, uh, Nigel? <laughs> The other concern and movements we could uh, would be oh that movement anyone in particular frying time okay um listen it it, it what what I think is that there are a lot of opportunities that we have out of the ordinary, okay? In other words, rather than um, looking at getting a watch with that the entire decision-making process was totally out of the hands of the people who want the watch is more like making a decision on some features that we'd like to have and to see how these could be integrated into the business model uh, of a watchmaker. In so doing, we would do two things. One, we'd provide something for ourselves that we thought was important. And at the same time, we would provide something. I mean, I know that a hundred uh, watch buyers isn't a lot, but uh, believe me, uh, we're not, we've got a lot of money into this. And so I think probably by the end of our second one, we'll be into it for well over a million and a half uh, dollars. And so it's not a, I mean, we're not like, not exactly chump change. We're not like the, but we're not like, you know, winning the grand prize either. Being associated with a watch group that would make them 
would make them lose face. Well, if that's their concern, then yeah, you're right. I agree. Hi, Michael. Deadbeat seconds would be another one. Deadbeat seconds is very can be very complex, though, and getting something in for that, but it's a good idea. The manufacturer may welcome the chance to test new components on a limited batch of 100. Good point, Dom. In fact, it's a very good point. I think, see, is, is that if a company, it depends on, I, I think it depends a lot on how we approach a watch company. And, and I think our watchmaker, it, we have to, we have to look at it in terms of mutual benefit rather than just our benefit. And, and I think in, in doing that, we're able to, I think, give ourselves a, a choice that wouldn't otherwise be there at a price that certainly wouldn't be there. Constant force mechanism. All of these things are great. And if we could figure out a way to do it, I mean, we, or if we could deal with a, with a company, um, one of the one of the really interesting companies is um, ETN. I think I, I'm not sure if that's the correct pr uh, pronunciation, but they have a, a sort of a base, not not just a base movement, but a base in their um, in their casing. the The base plate has two. Uh, I'll say two places, okay? And if they're using double barrels, uh, they do it with, they put them in parallel. If they're using a single barrel, something else goes in that other slot. I forgot what it was, but it it's a kind of flexibility. Uh, and ETN is not like a million, not selling a whole lot of watches and a whole lot of movements. But that might be a way to approach anybody who's making movements. Yeah, Graham. Uh, Graham's your point is 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 exactly right. On the other hand, <laughs> Moritz Grossbahn might look at it at a, at a different way and one that I think might be, I mean, like going through our route is not easy. I mean, getting a watch through the reek is a lot of work and a huge amount of work. And so I don't think that a buyer of a, of a um, Moritz Grossmann would I mean, th their numbers are so small that if somebody came along with saying, hey, here's a hundred of them, we'd like to buy them. Uh, you know, and, and again, Larique is, isn't cheap. <laughs> We're just not crazy expensive. I mean, if the difference between, let's say, 9,000 and 30 or 40,000 is why we have more people that can afford it, not because we're more popular. I don't, I mean, popular in the sense that we can afford something, but we have values for for strong horology. That Graham, you're right. <laughs> this is something people, I, I mean, we always can come up with enough excuses not to do anything. There are always problems. And, um, you know, it's like we can sit back and just say, okay, we'll take it in. And, and sort of this is why I think we have to, to really – get to a point where we're where we can think in a different way I'll, I'll put it that way um i hate using the term thinking outside of the box 
um, I think we have to think outside, outside of the box. And part of it's inside the box. And the part inside is understanding the process, the, the natural process that's going on in a watchmaking industry anyway. Do you think we can have a movement like uh, Dufour's duality? I don't know. I, the duality, the one I like, is the singularity. And that one would be a fun one to have. This is why in the um, pure horology, we looked at it. Now, would it be possible to have one called the grand balance? And have a and and see if we could get Agenor together with uh, Daniela uh, Dufour, and have them together put something together that they they then would have they could sell to anybody they wanted to, and we would basically uh, handle the funding of the research and development and so forth. But you know we'd get it we'd get it first. And that's a different understanding than the policy that Agenor has. But I was thinking if we tell them that we're the only one that could use it, I don't think that would, you know, where's the advantage of going through all of the development process? Yeah, you may be right, Hater. <laughs> I, I could. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. That's exactly. Well, he, here's the thing is that before, this is why I want to have this kind of discussion is that we would have to understand something. We would have to have a lot of discussions before even broaching the subject. Uh, I'll probably see, I don't know, we'll find out. Um, I hope some of you anyway are going to the... Um, the watch time show in October in New York, uh, because a lot of these people will be there and that would be a great place to talk about some of these ideas with the developers. Um, okay. Okay. Listen, yeah, I know we're, I'm way over the frying pan time. So let me just take this last group and then I, I we're going to have to go. Um, Hi, the mainspringer. I like uh, what Harbring is doing. And as they do collaborations quite a bit, also, they're bringing some complications to the uh, masses at lower prices. Yeah, they are. Um, they, they're doing, they're doing a lot of interesting things. We're, this is a little different than that. And, and it's, there's some, things that I don't want to talk about <laughs> in a group that um, I don't know, but you're, but you're right. This would be something that uh, that they do collaborations, but I, I think we would have to think about a lot of things there. Yes, you're right. Actually, so did uh, Zajar Lakutra. Uh, see, the thing that, uh, that Zajar Lakutra, and I guess, I don't know if Gerard Perigo was owned by anybody anymore. They were owned by someone, and then they weren't. And so I don't know what's going on with them. But I do know that Zajar Lakutra is owned by somebody else, by Richemont. And I don't, you know we would run into, we'd have to be careful. I like the independents like Aganor because they make the decisions, not, you know, some big holding company. Anyway, guys, listen, um, I, I don't mean to be um, sort of short and curt with, you know, some guy who's a, a Rolex fan and there's nothing wrong with Rolex. But I mean, like, we're trying to discuss something else and this guy laugh, 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 and you know, that and the goof off. So 
uh, it just, if you want to have a discussion, they just have to go and sit at the children's table or go sit some, somewhere else. But anyway, uh, if, any ideas on that? Let me know. We have a, we had a lot of discussion from this morning. So any thoughts, let me know. Take care and um, see you later. <laughs>